What's going on guys? It is Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. Um, we're going to do a gas pressure test today. Um, we're going to do the low pressure test first with the cutoff valves open. And then we're going to cut the shutoff valves and we're going to do a high pressure test for the gas company. See the gas company, whenever they lock a meter out or pull a meter before they turn it back on, they want to see a high pressure test, which is basically they want a gauge installed on the gas line um, that's reading between 10 and 15 PSI. When they come to do uh, their low pressure test, they need to see that. Um, now, when you're doing a high pressure test, you need to turn your shutoff valves off to any appliances or equipment you have. Those valves need to be turned off because if you hit a gas valve, um, an electronic gas valve with anything more than a few PSI, even any more than two PSI, you'll blow that gas valve. So uh, when we do a low pressure test, we do under two PSI, high pressure test, 10 to 15 PSI. So we're going to be doing both today, just in case one of our gas valves is weeping by or something like that. So, um, so yeah, should be uh, informative. I'm going to show you how I do it step by step and hopefully it helps you out. So take a look. All right, here we are at the gas meter here. So they didn't pull the meter. I just disconnected that, but they do have a lock on it right there. So I broke this union here, spun the meter out of the way. And this is the rig we're going to use here. This is a special fitting here that goes here. And then this is basically just the gas pressure gauge. Um, I'm going to take this one off because I don't trust this gauge. And I got a brand new one here. I'm sure that gauge works. It just, it's a little bent in there. So I want to make sure it's good. So I got a new one here. We're going to take this fitting out of here, three quarter fitting, put it right in here and, uh, and use this one instead. Now, it does have an air fill here, but I can just as easily take my refrigeration hose uh, and press it on here and just fill it with nitrogen. All right, we got our new gauge installed here on our fitting. We want to make sure that the seal in this is good and it is attached. Looks like it is. It's kind of like a flat O-ring there. Looks like that one's good. So we're going to spin that on there. All right, that's on there good. Um, now, I'm going to do a low pressure test first. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull that valve core there and put my manometer on there so I can just test it with low pressure. All right, we got our little valve core removed out of here. I'm gonna show you what I do here when I do a low pressure test. Um, you see here, I have, I just have my, uh, this hose hooked up here to there. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna blow in this. And um, after I blow in it, get a, a few PSI in there, or a few inches of water column, I'm gonna kink it off. Then I'm gonna hook it up to my manometer. So we actually ended up with 45 inches of water column here, um, which is about 1.6 PSI. So I had a lot of air behind me. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna let some of that out. All right, so we're sitting at 29 inches of water column now. Um, now, now we test. It's sitting at 29 right now. I do believe the gas cutoff valves upstairs are shut off so we want to test all this to make sure at least none of our uh, none of our testing equipment is leaking and then go from there because i can see it's already dropping so uh, i believe something at least is leaking here all right so we're steadily dropping here i've soaked up um, everything right here just to make sure we're not leaking from any of our test equipment doesn't look like we are Mm, I don't know, we might have a bubble here. We'll let that sit a couple more minutes. But in the meantime, I'm going to set up my ladder because i got to get up on the roof. All right, up here on the roof now. So the, the valves are open. This valve's open. This valve over here is open. But one thing... I didn't know it was here was we have a gas line going this way. 
Probably a unit heater or something down there. Furnace, could be anything really. I don't know. Now I've already soaked up the unions here. See if we get any bubblage. If I can't find anything right away, I'm gonna cut these valves off and then redo and then see if my pressure uh, stops dropping. All right, well, I cut the cutoff valves off and then repressurized a little bit up to 27.5. And it seems our leak has stopped. So what we're gonna do now, I still can't get to the one inside, but it looks like that one is not, um, that one's not leaking. So what we're going to do, but I, I will need to get in there to do the high pressure test because I'm going to need to cut that shutoff valve off. It might go to nothing. I don't know. I just don't know what's in there because uh, I can't access the building yet. But fairly certain now it's one of those rooftop units past the shutoff valve. So what we're going to do is we're going to open them up. See, it's actually going up now. We're going to open them up one at a time and see which one starts dropping. Now, I do expect it to drop a little bit once I open it up because the pressure will will carry past the shutoff valve. So we'll open one up, check, see what happens. Open the other one up, check, see what happens. So we're at 27.7 right now. All right, looks like we're dropping now. All right, it's our left side RTU that's leaking somewhere past the shutoff valve. So past that shutoff valve, we have a regulator, we have a union, um, a whole bunch of stuff. So at least we know where to start now. All right, guys, up here at the unit now, we got it opened up and we've already found our issue. We have a gas valve weeping by. You can see here, we soaked up our orifices here and look at them blowing bubbles. So what happens is this valve um, is basically letting gas weep by. That's what it's doing. So we're gonna get a new gas valve for this one. So what we're gonna do in the meantime, we're just gonna cut it off and then we're going to leave the other one off too so we can perform our high pressure test. <clears throat> we'll let the gas company know what's going on. We've got to order a valve and that'll be that. All right, well, the uh, data plate's worn off, but good thing we got one here. So we'll record that. I'm also gonna get a picture of the gas valve in case I, got, I can just go back generically with it. It doesn't seem like a very special valve. So. All right, yeah, I looked on uh, Ari Michael's website. This valve is available through them, probably a whole lot cheaper than from train. So that's what we're gonna go with. This is weird. What the hell is this? It's a limit switch. I'm not sure what this is about here. Hmm. Oh, you need this. When converting unit from downflow to horizontal airflow, TC01 high temperature limit switch must be replaced with the attached switch okay well we have a downflow so no need for this so someone never just cut it off <laughs> all right yep gonna get a valve for it uh probably come back to do that but main concern is getting this gas turned back on all right we got both valves off now still can't access the building uh, i've tried calling um the shop owner but with no no avail so She's holding low pressure now though with both valves off. So I need to access that inside wherever that gas line goes inside before I can do a high pressure test. All right, guys, I just got a uh, confirmation from um, one of the property managers that the gas line that goes inside is for an old tankless water heater that's been um, shut off, capped off. So we are good to go with our high pressure test. So I'll show you guys what I do this with nitrogen here. I already put a little bit in, so 
basically I just pull my fitting back just like this so my valve core depressor is showing and I turn it on and just press it onto that air valve and, you know it's not gonna lock onto there but you'll you can push it on there <laughs> shot a little tiny bit so we're gonna back that off a little there we go dead nuts 15 there is the gas line that's capped off so we're good there all right it's been about 10 minutes we're still dead on 15. We're still gonna give it a couple more minutes just to make sure. Everything's looking pretty good though, honestly. Well, we might have something right here. All right, our gauge hasn't moved much, but we do have a leak right there so we're gonna have to fix it I think it's leaking a little bit here too so we're probably gonna break this union here and then I'm, I think there's a small leak here anyway so I'm probably gonna open this up uh, clean that up and redope it and then probably uh, I might have enough to swing this whole thing off here so I can take this nipple off, redope it. All right, we got our got our pipe apart here. I'm gonna take a just a pipe cleaner, wire brush will work too. We're gonna clean up our fittings. Make sure we get all that old dope off there, inside and out. Redo it and put it back. Right, got that guy on there. Now we're gonna clean up this guy here. All right, we're all fitted back together, soaked back up. See if anything's leaking. In the meantime, I'm gonna hop up on the roof just to double check all those fittings. All right, we're gonna breeze right through these. If anything was leaking, we'd see bubbles. We'd see like a, like a cluster of bubbles almost after it sits for a while. It's like a cluster of bubbles. Kind of like that one that was down the stairs there. And hopefully the sun hasn't dried off my pipe or my uh, leaks soap up here. I'm not seeing any clusters. All right. All right, if everything holds downstairs, I think we'll be good to go. All right, I let her sit. It's been about 15, 20 minutes, no bubblage. Um, I did have it set on 15 PSI, didn't move. This particular gas company requested uh, 10 PSI on a 30 pound gauge, so I lowered it down to 10, let it sit for a few more minutes. I think we're good to go. Left him a note with the repairs I made and talking about the bad gas valve. Uh, left him my number in case he needs to call me. So we will uh, we'll pack up here and I think we'll be good to go. All right, guys, that's how I work through a, uh, a gas leak test. I first do a low pressure test like I showed you. Just a hose on a fitting and blow into it. That's all you really need to do. And then kink it off, put it on your manometer and see if it drops. 
Uh, you wanna make sure you test anything you put on to make sure it's not leaking before you test the rest of the stuff. Um, and then, um, you know, I found many leaks this way. And once you do your low pressure test, if you're comfortable with how that went, just shut your shutoff valves off and do your high pressure test for the gas company. Um, I've used this way for years, always had luck with it, and was always able to appease the gas company with doing it this way. So maybe it'll help you guys too. But all right, guys, that's about it for this one. Um, I did have Inficon send me some stuff. Um, they sent me a combustion analyzer, a combustible gas leak detector, and a personal CO detector. Uh, I'm gonna go over all that in the coming days. Um, I might even do a giveaway with something. Um, I just gotta get the stuff opened up and go over it before I make videos on it, but it's some really nice stuff. I am very, very grateful they sent me this stuff. Uh, I can't wait to go over it and show you guys. So, all right guys, hit a thumbs up if this was helpful for you. Um, subscribe if you're new here and uh, comment below anything you guys might do the same or do differently, anything to help out. So um, yeah, and if you feel generous, go ahead and drop a super thanks or go ahead and donate. Um, cash tags are in the description. So, all right guys, catch you on the next one.